Hello and welcome back to another Oscar prediction video where today I will be taking a look at the category of best production design. Now I just want to say I'm recording this in a different room than I usually do so I apologize if you hear more acoustics. Uh, that's not my intention. Maybe I'll fix that later. Uh, but this category, uh, it's a little bit interesting because uh, I feel like I say it's interesting for every video, but I don't, don't actually explain why it's interesting until we get into it. it it's tricky, because I think there is a very clear front runner on paper, uh, but it's kind of weird how we got here. I think there's a lot of categories that are like that. Well, yeah, it makes sense on paper what's winning, but it's kind of weird that this is winning. Uh, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a second, but first and foremost, uh, let's start off with fifth most likely to win, The Fablemans. A production designer, Rick Carter, and set decorator, Karen O'Hara. Uh, Rick Carter is a two times winner in this category for Lincoln and the original Avatar, and Karen is a one time winner for Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. So definitely a lot of prestige going into this nomination. Uh, however, the nomination itself, I think, came as something of a surprise. Not not a huge surprise, but the production design in this film is not the flashiest. Even though the film is a period piece, it's not as big and grand as I think the other nominees in this category are. It's more subdued. And there's something to be said for more subtle production design. It clearly is what fits the story, and Steven Spielberg definitely really worked hard to recreate uh, locations from his childhood and adolescence right down to the smallest detail. So there's certainly, again, something to be said for that. However, I don't think that this is going to win. I think it's just too subtle. It doesn't call a lot of attention to itself the way the other four nominees all do. And uh, because the movie overall is not as beloved as people thought it was going to be. It missed out on quite a couple of major categories, and I don't expect this one to be like the big best picture front runner that it was clearly poised to be. And I, to be perfectly honest, I don't know if this is winning a single Oscar on the night, but if it does, it's probably not going to be this one. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I think it's just too subtle. Good work, subtle work, but it's a bit too subtle. Fourth most likely to win is Avatar The Way of Water. Production designer Dylan Cole and Ben Proctor and set decorator Vanessa Cole, all of whom are on their first nomination. Uh, now this nomination is interesting because uh, the original Avatar won this category back in 2009, so you would think that, that this one would be in a good position to win. However, because this is a sequel, a lot of the production design in this film is inspired heavily by what was in the first film. Now, there are a number of new locations that all look really great, um, but the thing that makes me confident this isn't going to win the Oscar is what happened at the uh, ADG Awards, because this was nominated in uh, production design in a fantasy or sci-fi film, and it was... It seemed to be the likely winner in that category, but it lost to Everything Everywhere, which is not even nominated at the Oscars. So that tells me that this movie just doesn't have the support that it needs. Maybe too many people feel like, oh, it's a sequel. Maybe too many people feel like, hey, most of what the sets and production design in this film were not actually created in a soundstage. Most of it was created on a computer, and that feels like cheating. I, I don't know, but it just... I think while most people agree that the movie is visually spectacular and has a lot of really great environments, I think there's just too much, I, I don't know, bad will of the fact that it is a sequel and the fact that so much of it is CGI, and I think people are gravitating more towards other production design that uses more practical elements and they had to build actual big sets for. Uh, and one of those movies is Third most likely to win, All Quiet on the Western Front. Production designer Christian M. Goldbeck and set decorator Ernestine Hipper. She is hipper than the other nominees in this category. And both of them are on their first nomination. Now, the production design in this movie 
is nothing all that new if you've seen World War I movies before, but it does feel very authentic. And considering that they actually had a really small budget to do this with, it is impressive that they're able to make this come together and make it look so real and really immerse you in the world of the film. I think a lot of the trenches really do look and feel accurate to how you want them to feel. However, again, I don't know just how... Like, it, it, it is small and it is subtle, and I think a lot of the trench work, while impressive, is also very reminiscent of what we've seen in other films. And I think if this was going to win anywhere, it would have won the BAFTA, seeing how much they loved that movie, but it didn't win there. And I think that this is going to get some votes. I think the movie is certainly very well liked, but I just, people like to vote for something that's new, something that they haven't seen before, which is part of why I don't think Avatar is winning either. But while the set decoration is very nice, and it's obvious, I mean, if they're doing a World War I movie, it's not like they can just invent new sets. Most people have a pretty good idea of what World War I looked like. Uh, so very well done, but I just don't think this is a serious chance of winning. Second most likely to win is Elvis. Production designer Catherine Martin and Karen Murphy and set decorator Beverly Dunn. Uh, Catherine Martin is, of course, married to Baz Luhrmann, and she has previously won this category twice for Moulin Rouge and Great Gatsby. Uh, Beverly Dunn has won for Great Gatsby, and Karen Murphy is on her first nomination. At any rate, uh, a lot of prestige going into this particular category, and this movie, to me, is the only film that has any realistic chance at upsetting uh, the number one frontrunner. I think this movie really does go big or go home. Uh, it looks pretty spectacular. I don't know if there's any one particular set that really calls attention to itself as just, look how big and grand this set is. There's a lot of medium and grand sets throughout the movie, and I think it really is the variety that is getting called out here. Because the movie spans many decades, and we see so many different types of stages and arenas that Elvis Presley performs at. Uh, and it's, it's all well done, but I don't know if it's grand enough. It, I don't know if it has the same feel to it that Moulin Rouge and Great Gatsby had, uh, which again does make sense because we're basing this off of historical events and we want to stay accurate to the time period. However, if I, if you look at uh, what awards this has won in the lead up, I don't think it's won anything. Uh, let me just uh, scrolling here in real time. Best production design. Yeah, Elvis. Oh, it has a uh, two critics awards at St. Louis and San Diego, I think. But I, I don't think that's very much. And I don't. Oh, oh no, it's that set decorator society. That's what that is. So again, it's all good work, and I do think it is in the best position to upset. However, the film that I believe is in the number one position to win the Oscar is Babylon. Production designer Florencia Martin and set decorator Anthony Carlino, both of whom are on their first nomination. So not the most prestigious in this category, but this is a movie, first and foremost, that takes place in old Hollywood. And if there's one thing that this particular branch loves, it's old Hollywood. Mank, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, La La Land, any film that recreates the Hollywood of a bygone era is like catnip to Oscar voters. Now, and, and the film really does do a, a really great job with a lot of variety of the sets that are very, very big and very, very grand. There's one particular sequence where they're filming six different silent films on the same lot, and we see all these different sets, and there's all these party scenes that are so elaborate, and then there's the Hello College scene that's a highlight of the film. There's a lot of really, really great sets, and we do span, like, a long period of time. So it's all very, very flashy for this award. With that said, the, the one thing that gives me pause is the fact that this is the only film in this category that's not also up for Best Picture. However, as of right now, this movie has completely swept all of the precursors, 
It's won the Critics' Choice Award, it's won the BAFTA, and it won a uh, Production Designers Guild, a ADG, sorry. So all of that basically tells me that this is going to be the frontrunner, that this is going to sweep the whole season. And even though this movie has proven to be rather divisive, I think even the film's biggest detractors have to admit that the production design is pretty spectacular. I think anyone can be okay with giving the movie a win in this particular category. Now, whether or not it stands a good chance at winning score, mm, that's a little bit more up for debate, and we will get to that one. But I think, rest assured, they should be pretty safe at winning one Oscar for production design. So thank you very much for listening, uh, or watching this video, rather, and uh, tune in next time where I will be taking a look at the category of Best Live Action Short Film. See you then.